I am your man's Nick Rattlehead. And that is the grass. my guy, my man with the master plan, 100 grand, man. Got to hold this battery pack in my hand because it doesn't work, man. Bars, by the way. And this is Aftershock Reviews, your place for dope, 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 dope music. Dude, I'm ready. I got my Lucifer shirt on too. It's not a game. Shout outs to Lucifer. Bruh, it's not, they would actually think I was talking about Satan or something. Look, this is actual rock band. We did a review earlier on. Go back and look at it, by the way, if you haven't. And we are here to talk about some more death doom. Ooh, and ooh, man. It's, oh, this is, this is vile. This is some vile stuff. The name of the band is called Alterage, and the name of the album is called The Approaching Roar. Ooh, right? It sounds like some type of like, like 80s horror movie, right? Some type of slasher flick, right? And Matt, let me tell you something, dude. It's like, have you heard of this band called Portal? No. No. Okay, so back, what they are is they're this avant-garde, avant-garde allergies. Cut me a break. Avant-garde? No, allergies. Leave me alone. <laughs> they are this avant-garde mm, death metal band, right? With a little bit of, I'll say noise, you know what I mean? And a little bit of grind, right? But Matt, holy cow. Like, what makes Portal so great, right, is the fact that they're not afraid to take such great musical risks, right? To the point where there are a lot of the times where you can't even necessarily tell what the vocalist is saying, and I know what you're thinking, that's pretty much, you know, self-explanatory about all death metal bands or extreme metal bands in general. But in this case, it's to the point where like, you can tell they're saying lyrics, but you can't hear what they're saying. So it's like almost like some type of incantation or some type of spell that they're casting on you, like and like summoning demons and the, the, the whack awful thing about it is that you really can't tell that they're doing it. You see what I mean? It's very atmospheric. It's very dense, right? And it's very offbeat. So the reason why I bring up Portal is because this band, Alter Age, shares a lot in common with them. And the fact that there are no risks that you can really grab a hold to, right? Because, you know, sometimes when it comes to death metal, what makes the song a lot of the times, what makes the song so catchy or what makes the song so engaging is the fact that you can actually recall the riff, right? You can kind of like sing it in your head. Like, if we're talking about death metal bands nowadays, if we're talking about a gate creeper per, per se, or we're talking about craving flesh, right? You can literally hear the riff going on in your head and then you'll start singing it and you'll be like, yo, let me let me just go back to Sonoran and just start listening to Craven Flesh real quick. This is not an album that does that. This is not an album that really gives you something necessarily to hold on to, right? Because a lot of the moments are so fleeting and a lot of the moments are so engaging to the fact that you're really focused on what's going on around you because at some point you might think that something will literally jump from the shadows. You know what I mean? It's nutty. But it's so good. As a matter of fact, let's talk about the album artwork really quickly too. Because the album artwork is, it looks like a bunch of bodies floating around in some type of sea, right Matt? Or some type of lake. And what it does is, it reminds me, if we're talking about slasher flicks here, have you seen Freddy vs. Jason? Mm, I don't think so. What? Okay, first off. It's a really good horror movie and the fact that it's so flippin' terrible. <laughs> you know what I mean? Of course, Cre Freddy's cracking jokes. It's early 2000s, so there's an even a rave scene with glow sticks and all this other crap. It's not that great. But it's still engaging because it's fun, right? But there is one scene that really did stick out to me, especially when I saw the album artwork for The Approaching Roar, was there, there's a fight scene where Freddy literally is fighting Jason in his dream, right? And then right before Jason comes down with a swing with his machete, right? Water starts to come down. And then as we all know, since Jason Voorhees died by drowning, he's afraid of water, right? So J so Fred was like, oh, okay, cool. So you are afraid of something. So he makes water come down all around Jason and he reduces him to this shivering child, right? Although he's still wearing the hockey mask. So at this point, Freddy takes the opportunity to, and it's weird how he does it. He takes his blade and puts it in his temple and now he's able to see what's going on in Jason's mind, right? Now, you can see Jason wading through a decrepit, 
grayed out, very gnarly version of Camp Crystal Lake. And he's dragging this corpse that he literally just got through hacking to death behind him. Now, as he goes into the house, right, Matt, he opens the door and the door, and yet again, you have to suspend belief because it's a horror movie. The door has like this wall of water behind it, right? And these floating corpses, right? And I think it does a really good job, uh, this album artwork, of almost get, paying homage to that, whether they intended to do it or not. It really does a good job of paying homage to these old slasher movies because the way that they approach this stuff, it feels like it feels like a slasher. It feels like there is some type of main character in this narrative, right? If there is one, which I don't think there is, but in my mind, because the music does a good job of literally stalking you, right? Measuring you before it jumps out and it grabs you. So let's get into the track listing really quick. Sighting opens up the album, right? And what it does is it has a lot of these discordant chords, right, Matt? And they're literally just smashing and reverberating against each other in this really odd way. And it's very sour and it's very off-putting and it does a good job of creating tension because you're waiting at this one, you're like, okay, I've listened to enough death metal albums, I've listened to enough D doom albums, I've listened to enough death doom albums to know that something is about to happen. But you just don't know when. And then it smacks you with this torrential pouring. Of, 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 of heavy guitar riffs and blast beat drums and, and things of that nature. And Matt, the thing about it is, if we're talking about torrential downpour, the freaking vocals for this are undis... Let me tell you something, you can't tell what he's saying. Yet again, so this is yet again, going back to the portal comparison, you literally can't tell what he's saying, but the music doesn't suffer, but instead benefits from it. Because at this point, it's almost like when you're really scared, you may not necessarily be paying attention to what a killer might be saying to you, right? You hear the sound of you panting and because you're running or your heartbeat because it's in your throat, right? And you're trying to think about ways to get out. That's exactly what's happening, especially in the siding in, in particular, right? To the point where it's kind of like, you hear the vocalist, but he's somewhere buried in the wash of guitars, and you really can't make out what he's saying behind the pummeling blast beats. And a, let me tell you something, the percussionist for this, the percussionist behind this album, is amazing because he does a good job of flip-flopping between black blast beats, between D beats, between these great plotting, stomping percussion uh, fills, right? And that is magnificent. And the thing about it is, which also makes this album so great, is because since it is a Death Doom album, you will automatically think that there's going to be a 10-minute track, a 14-minute track. Oh, okay, there's a 16-minute track, right? They do none of that. This album is less than an hour long. It's less than an hour long and it is so good for it because at this point they do a really good job of incorporating all their ideas in a very seamless way within the span of three minutes, four minutes, five minutes. I think the longest track on here might be like six, not six, seven minutes and some change, which is great because you don't run the risk of me losing interest. You don't run the risk of me looking at the time code and being like, okay, I've heard everything I needed to hear, next track. No, it is so good because you don't have time to really be bored with anything because as soon as you think maybe they should switch this up, they switch it up as at least as, as if they heard you. There's this track called Earn, and that's one of the longest tracks off of this album, and it's over seven minutes long. It doesn't feel like it though, because for two minutes, two bone-chilling, blood-curdling minutes, the, there's like these weird, sour guitar notes and they literally just play them, just strum the chord and then let the chord reverberate. And then I'll strum it again and let it reverberate. And they do it for two minutes until finally the vocalist and the guitars just bust you as hard as they cold cock you in the jaw. They just cold cock you clean in the jaw. And it is so great. And then after they gold cock you with the blast beat and the drums and the and, and, and the guitars and the vocals, and then it starts to get very rhythmic, right? Very rhythmic until it goes into the third movement of the track. It's almost orchestral to the point where it's kind of like, okay, here's the introduction and here's the first movement and then here's this movement and here's the bridge or a transition into this movement and they use the transition via sound or, 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 or noise or, or they hold a guitar lick as long as they possibly can to go seamlessly into the third 
movement, right? But the thing about it is, while it might sound very beautiful as, since I call it orchestral, right? You just don't want to know who the freaking conductor is. Because for me, the conductor is Jason Voorhees and his baton is a machete. You see what I mean? And then he's going to hack you to death once the freaking song is over. Or he might just hack you to death while the song is going on. Like, it is so great. It is so foreboding and dark and like literally devoid of all hope, right? It is so so great and the thing about it is it's also kind of like infernal coil uh you remember within a rule forgotten last year right matt where it's like it was so elemental and so absolutely petrifying in the way that they approach that grindcore sound right to the point where it's kind of like at the end you literally think something is might literally happen to you like this band has no regard for your well-being <laughs> none zero nada you see what i mean and it's the same here it is so great and the thing about it is what i will give altridge over infernal coil and portal is that they're more melodic way more melodic where it can be with portal you're like oh you hear all these industrial sounds and these weird chords and all these other it's it, it's it's odd it's like they literally have no regard for your physical or mental or musical well-being whatsoever while crafting this album. And what I, like I said before, Matt, there's so much more melodic than Portal is. There's so much more melodic than Infernal Coil is, which pretty much puts them into their own class by themselves. You see what I mean? Yeah, they're in the same grade as you, but they're doing things differently, right? Matt, I, I kid you not, this was a very surprising release for me. Also, the release uh, by Season of Mist, very great, uh, very, 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 very great metal label. Matt, the name of this album again is called The Approaching Roar. The name of the band, Alter Rage. Please check this out. It's on Season of Mist. Check this out. This is so, so good. This is so refreshing so exhilarating and yet petrifying at the exact same time. It's awesome. And Matt, ooh, Matt, Matt, look at me, Matt. No, don't look at the camera, look at me. I need you to look at me. Please, please look at me. He's not gonna look at me, so whatever. Matt, Full of Hell released the first single from their album, Weeping Choir. It is called Burning Myrrh. Holy fish paste. Matt, it is so good. Oh my gosh. Is it good? Yeah, hey, go listen to Burning Myrrh by Full of Hell. Go listen to Burning Myrrh by Full of Hell. The name of the album that this will be on is called Weeping Choir, out on Relapse Records, May 17th. Matt, Matt. Matt, it is so good. Oh my gosh. And it's like, it, 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 it might be two and a half minutes long, but they fit so much. Oh, it's good. Oh, it's good stuff. 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 I am Nick Rattlehead. If you cannot tell, I am excited about Full of Hell. Bars. Bars. Don't disrespect the bars. Don't no, do it. Disrespect it every time. Whatever. Hating. I am Nick Rattlehead. That is. Matt. <laughs> we have to shock reviews. We'll see y'all later. Peace. <laughs>